Jason here with Dirt Race Life. One of the things on the setup that I had not done yet that I wanted to do was put a left front chain on the car, okay? And I've been waiting because it's like one thing at a time, trying to understand as I go, you know, what the setup's doing and how things react and stuff. Well, the car has become very predictable driving. It's acting the same way. I make adjustments. It's making sense to me. Uh, just hadn't had the horsepower there because I've been chasing some issues and stuff. But got all that solved. And so anyway, so it's time to put the left front chain on there. And of course, y'all know I'm cheap. I build everything in the shop. So I want to show y'all how I'm going to build a left front chain and throw on this car. Well, with that, let's get to it. Hey, and we are racing tonight, so don't run off on this video. So I've got the car up on a lift where we can work on it. But what I did is, is I put a block here and I jacked this left front up to get that lower control arm level like it would be on the track. And here's what we're going to do. I got a 3 8 hole from the factory right here on that lower control arm. Can you all see that? And I'm not sure. This is a Nova 7377 lower and it has the hole there. And I'm not sure on a metric exactly where the hole's at, but you can drill a hole. It's not a problem. I'm going to go straight up. And I'm going to hook a chain right here into my frame. I'm going to drill a hole. I'm not going to weld anything on the car. I'm going to bolt it on. So I'm going to have a bolt going through the frame right there. And then I'm going to have a bolt that's adjustable going down through the lower control arm right there. So that's where the chain's going to go and how we're going to bolt it to the car. But we got to put it together. So let's do that. All right. So really all it takes to do this, you need a bolt and a chain on the bolt. I use a two inch bolt that's threaded all the way. And like with this one right here, I just, you know, it's like a grade five bolt. And then it was a regular two inch bolt. And then I just took a die and threaded it on back. But I think you can buy these with all the threads there like that. Um, or to be honest, you could use a carriage bolt where that you have all the threads and you could just cut it down to the length you need. It won't hurt to have for it to have extra threads. You're going to see where this comes into play in a minute. But, uh, but anyway, but you need to have like two inches of threads. And that has to do with, you know, you being able to adjust on it and everything. So I'm going to use, I've got a two inch bolt right here. Like I said, you could use a carriage bolt. This stuff, like you could use grade two. There's not a lot of pressure on it. All it's doing is just stopping your spring from continuing to extend. So the only pressure weight it's holding is just you know, that weight, that pressure from the spring itself, not like the whole car or anything like that. So it doesn't take a lot of bolt to hold this. All right, that and a stop nut. This is absolutely the least expensive way to build, you know, a chain for your car in one of the corners. On the chain itself, I use 3 16 chain. In my opinion, the 3 16 is the smallest link you can use that when the, you know, like when the spring comes out and it, you know, it's going to hit like that right there. I think anything below 3 16 like for example, this is the little like quarter inch, uh, or not quarter inch, but, uh, but like one eighth inch dog, uh, like dog chain or swing chain. When you get this small, this chain like this right here, as you, as you pull, 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 then what happens is, is those chain, that chain's going to start extending. It's going to stretch and narrow and start freezing up and then your setting's going to change because the chain's going to get longer um so that's the minimum you can get that at your local hardware store like me i just go to my tractor supply um you know wherever real simple how i do this i'm going to weld i'm going to weld that together like it right there so let's do that what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take that link and I'm gonna stick directly over the top of it like that right there. And I'm gonna try to stick that. Give it a spot. Make sure it's straight up. The reason I want it straight up, I don't want it to be angled and like the, the that link is bending over time and changing or it's like jerks the, the, the bolt at an angle or anything like that. So I'm just gonna kind of try to make sure I got it straight straight up and it's not quite straight so I'm gonna see if I can straighten it without breaking it off. Yeah, hang out be perfect but you know pretty straight. Alright close enough I'm gonna weld it up. Sure 
you don't cut through your length or nothing like that. Yeah, that's looking good. Woo, that's getting hot. Deli. I think I had some anti seeds on that bolt. Making it wigger up a little bit. That side, good. That side, yeah, I need to clean this out a little bit. Some ugly welding here, I can do better than this, dead gone. This looks atrocious, y'all. But, that's uh, not critical. Just quick. These are the kind of welding projects on the car that starting out well and you know it's okay to try that's better okay yes all right so we got our bolt welded oh we're in business now now don't don't run this under water or dip this in something to cool it because you don't want that to be brittle right there. You don't, you know, it's going to take an impact. Pop, 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 pop. So, so don't go throwing this underwater, trying to cool it off right quick or something like that and make it brittle and then make that link break open. Because that's what will happen. Well, not necessarily going to happen, but you're going to make a lot, a lot more risk of making that link right there brittle where that it could pop open and then just snatch the chain loose on you. So, yeah, don't do that. Let it cool slow. And... Get the rest of the stuff ready. We'll throw it on there. Okay, so you see I got it ready to go here. Weld it on. I'm gonna drop it in that hole right there all the way down. Remember, I've got this up at ride height right now. The easiest way to do this is like if you got the car sitting on the ground and you got your front fender off where you can reach in here with it sitting on the ground, that's gonna be the easiest way to get this right. Because I'm wanting to be able to extend two inches. And I'm just gonna take, see where my links line up. And I am going to drill a hole right there see what I did there I want the links to be longer because that gives room for the chain to go somewhere if you make the chain real short it really don't have nowhere to go as you compress okay okay so I'm gonna drop the chain down in there like that all the way that's the link that I'm gonna bolt I'm gonna put a mark that's the link I'm gonna cut off right there I'm gonna cut Man, got a marker that won't even right there. Better hold that in my hand. I'm gonna cut that link right there. That link gets cut. All right. So I got a left front chain. I've got a 5 16 bolt right here. The reason I went with a 5 16 bolt is you can kind of get a 3 8 through there, but you got to kind of like spread the chain out to get it in. And if I ever want to take this chain up a link at the track or something, like if I really change my setup or something at the track, I want to be able to like just stick that bolt in there. And so I went with the 5 16 because this is only shear force, no problem at all using the 5 16 Like I said, not a ton of pressure on these. Y'all, I almost forgot one more thing. All right, electrical tape. Heat shrink tubing is nicer. Yes, I agree. Um, but heat shrink tubing that is great big that you can fit over uh, these chains like this is also expensive. Um, I have tried to buy some heat shrink tubing that I thought would fit. And it did not go over this chain and I wasted my money on it. And so I just used electrical tape. And I just used a lot of electrical tape. Cause oh, so why am I doing this, Jason? Well, what I'm doing here is when you when your left front or when a wheel compresses, when you compress down, that chain's going to go slack, right? Well, if the chain goes slack and the links double over each other, it is possible. It doesn't typically happen, but it is possible that the two the chain will bind itself. It'll it'll hook up and hang. Uh, link to link and then that suddenly has shortened the snot out of your chain and oh your car is going to turn into junk instantly when that happens and so I just 
I just throw this tape on there and because it'll still wiggle and bend and flex and and give you know to allow it to compress it'll just bow um, steel cables work really great by the way for that reason but you know then you got to have special ends for them and all that kind of stuff but anyway but the tape like this right here oh this works great okay and then and then what I do just to keep the tape from untying itself is just on the end I stop the tape I just throw a zip tie on it because man that dirt and wind and all that stuff it'll it'll unwind that tape on you you'll like every time you wash the car like your tape will have half of it'll come off so I just pull that tight and clip that now I'm ready to throw it on the car see because it can still give you know just like and if you've got big heat shrinking tubing or you can get it I mean that stuff works great um, but yeah, that works just fine. All right, so I'm just going to drop that in the hole. Throw that up there. This is where it gets a little bit tricky. There we go. Just like that. Put that bolt in there. Put that on there. A couple washers. Just like that. Pushed against it. Get that joker. Get this here. Branch. Yep. Of course, I'm just using, I use nylon stop nuts on a lot of stuff. Because they do a pretty good job of not coming completely loose. That threads can, see when this lower goes down, it's going to just pull up through there. Just like that right there. I'm gonna put this stop nut right here on the bottom of it. So then, at the track, I can just sit here and I can adjust this nylon stop nut. All right, on the final setup for it, what I'm gonna do is I'll set the car on the ground and I'm just measuring on my shock center eyelet to center eyelet. And then I'm gonna turn around and I'm gonna adjust that nylon stop nut to where that when I jack up the left front corner with my jack, the shock will extend out an inch and a half, okay? So two inches, an inch and a half, that's kind of the adjustment zone. And like, when do we adjust this? What this left front chain is doing is it's controlling how much total traction the right rear can get, all right? So if I tighten this chain down, then when I tighten this chain down, what it's doing is, is it's limiting how much final pressure that right rear is able to get. Because as the right rear traction's up, it's taking that spring rate of that left front. That left front's pushing down. As that left front's pushing down and that shock's going out on that left front, well, that's transferring. Remember, so it's a wedge going across. That's transferring back into the right rear. But we can get too much drive on the right rear, and that's taken away from our left rear. So we're trying to get off the corner, and the right rear is just tractioning up. You know, we're up against a cushion or something, and we're tractioning up on this right rear. And so it's got the car bound up, but we don't have that drive we need off of that left rear of the car. And so if we were to take and make it hit a chain on this left front coming up, well then that stops it from continuing to drive into that right rear. Now that's pushing weight back over to the left rear. So that can really help on a dry slick track with getting us to traction up and get off that corner. And so tightening the chain down on the left front is an adjustment to help create more drive off of the corner. Now I don't understand all the nuances of it yet. That's why I waited kind of got the rear of the car where they understood it and understood the adjustments and now I'm putting it on. But I'm gonna start with the shock being able to extend out an inch and a half. If that's creating too much drive off of the corner, you know, and I feel that, you know, when I'm throttling up, if the car's drifting and pushing out on me, then I'm gonna extend that on out towards two inches. And if I feel like that I'm not getting enough drive, I may possibly tighten it down to an inch and a quarter or something, maybe an inch. But like as you tighten that left front chain down more, it starts making the car more inconsistent. You know, when you hit these chains on this car, that's gonna make the car suddenly change how it's handling. 
And so like the more of that you do and the more aggressive you are with it, the more that the car is suddenly gonna change how it's handling. Well, that's inconsistency. That's you're suddenly having to put driver input in because the car is turning on you, you know, without you making it do it. So just keep that in mind. This is gonna be a learning experience for me as well. But we're there, we got the chain on it. We're gonna set it to an inch and a half. All right, y'all, let's go racing. out didn't even get to run our heat race didn't get to run the thousand to win special nothing and went out for the hot laps and was excited because I feel like the car is right motors right everything's right yeah sometimes it's like that but at least it's mother nature and it's not me this time anyway y'all don't worry we got a lot of races lined up late summer and fall for our crush here I think it's doing what it needs to do now for me to be competitive so you want to like, comment, subscribe on this video. That would be awesome for Dirt Race Life to help us grow. I will see you next time. And subscribe, folks. This is good stuff. Bye, y'all.